I want to introduce the idea of Dirac notation, and I want to do it in the context of 3D vectors uh, and how they translate to Dirac notation. So let's start, for instance, with a column vector, A, written as A1, A2, A3. Uh, we're going to write this in so-called Dirac notation as ket A, where we have a line and then a bracket there. Let me consider then a row vector. And I can write a row vector as the transpose of my vector, of my column vector, a1, a2, a3. So again, this is the transpose, oops, not transform, transpose. Um, and remember, a transpose, if you were going to transpose a matrix, so say you have a matrix here and you take the transpose of it, you reflect across the diagonal. And so it's the same thing with a vector. You turn a column vector into a row vector. And we're going to call that bra a, and we're going to write it like this with these angle brackets. And lines. So uh, this is the basics of a Dirac notation. Uh, let's talk about dot products. So with vectors, we know what we mean by a dot product. We take a dot a. In this language, I'd say that's a transpose a, again using this transpose, uh, and then this dot product would be done through matrix multiplication. And the result is uh, what you would normally get. So if I write my row vector and my column vector, then I'll get a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared. In Dirac notation, I'm going to write this as bra a ket a, or I could say that's bra ket, or bracket. I don't know what happened to the c there, but OK. Um, and so that's the origin of the names. And indeed, I get a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared for that. So that's what I mean by a dot product, or we're going to call that an inner product in uh, Dirac notation. Let's talk about basis vectors. In 3D basis vectors, we typically have the i hat, j hat, and k hat basis vectors. And now we're going to be working with basis vectors I'm going to label as uh, ket ei, or i runs from 1 to 3. And so that's going to be my basis in Dirac notation. If I take i hat dot i hat, I get 1, which is the symbol of a unit vector. And if I take i hat dot j hat, I get 0, and so on and so forth, the usual things. In Dirac notation, we would say e i e j bracket is delta i j. That's the Kronecker delta. And so we'd say this basis is called orthonormal. It's both orthogonal and normalized. So for example, e1, e1 is just 1, um, et cetera, for all the other inner products. That's the basics of the vectors and inner products. Um, if I were to write out my vector as a1 i hat plus a2 j hat plus a3 k hat, I can just write that in bracket notation in terms of my basis vectors as such. Or a more compact way of writing that is to write it as a sum over i, a i, ket e i, for i goes from 1 to 3. It's kind of a compact way of writing all that together. Uh, we can talk about projection. If I want to project out, say, the a2 component of my vector a, I would take j hat dot my vector a. I can do a similar thing in uh, Dirac notation. I can take bra e2 with a, or rather inner product e2 with a. That also projects out a2. When we're talking about real 3D vectors, let's talk about complex vectors now, because we're going to be mostly dealing with complex vectors in quantum mechanics. So let me take a complex uh, column vector, uh, A, and another complex column vector, B. And by complex, I mean that the components of the vector are themselves complex numbers. So the AI and BI are themselves complex numbers. Uh, let's say I take an inner product between A and B. This isn't the usual thing, so I need to take A star transpose B in order to take a proper inner product here for complex numbers. So that's a 1 star, a 2 star, a 3 star written as a row vector, and then b1, b2, b3 written as a column vector. If you multiply all that out uh, in Gordito, we get a 1 star b1, a 2 star b2, plus a 3 star b3. OK. Uh, this quantity here that I did when I took my inner product is called the Hermitian conjugate the generalization of the transpose to complex vectors. It's also typically called the adjoint. We'll use them interchangeably. 
And so if I take the Hermitian conjugate of A, that means I take the uh, complex conjugate and then the transpose. That's what I mean by Hermitian conjugate. In Dirac notation, um, I can do all of this. So in Dirac notation, again, I have a vector or a state A, which I'll write out in terms of my basis states, E1, A2, and E3. Um, and I have a similar looking expression for the ket B. So if I write this as a bra, write A as a bra, then I would take the complex conjugate of each of the entries, of each of the components, and then I would turn all of my ket basis vectors into bra basis vectors. And so my inner product would look like this. So then I would have the same thing, A1 star B1, A2 star B2, plus A3 star B3. Again, using the orthonormality of the basis states. It's convenient to write this as a sum again. So I have AI star BI sum uh, over I from one to three. A couple of things to note um, about inner products uh, in with complex vectors. So we define a norm, which is the inner product of a state with itself, and that should always be greater than or equal to zero. Also, if I take an inner product between A and B, um, that's the same as taking the complex conjugate of the inner product between B and A. Uh, what that means, though, is that the inner product does not necessarily give you a real number. Because uh, you can take a complex conjugate of it. Okay, but if I take the complex conjugate, I switch which one goes in which slot. So let's look at an example. A vector is 1i0, and B vector is minus i0, 2i. Uh, let's look at the Hermitian conjugate of A. So the Hermitian conjugate of A is now a row vector, complex conjugate. So if I take the dot product now between A and B, or the inner product between A and B, I take the Hermitian conjugate of A, dotted with B, and so I just get minus I. Uh, if I write out my bra, or excuse me, my ket for A in terms of basis vectors, and then also my bra in terms of basis vectors, so I have to complex conjugate my entries, uh, I can also write out for B, the ket for B, and so then I take the inner product between A and B, and well, in gory detail, I'll write out all of that in terms of the bras and the kets. And then in principle, I have to distribute this through, do all of my inner products between my basis states. I only get one term, which is minus i e1 inner product e1, which is minus i, which is of course what the other result should have been if I hadn't made the typo. Okay, so that's the idea behind inner products and Dirac notation and how that relates to vectors. Uh, it's just a new way of writing vectors in a slightly more compact notation.